Hello, and welcome to Achievement Hunting 101, the podcast that changes lineups more often than Panic at the Disco, but hopefully we won't break up. This is level 235. Uh, Fufu absconded with the patron money, and he's off gallivanting in Disney somewhere. With us this week, we have Matrark, a.k.a. Michelle. Hello. As well, we have... Koosh Moose, a.k.a. Nate. I'm going to go to Hershey Park. Uh, it's got chocolate, and they're closer. I don't know where he goes. Probably put, like, Old Bay in his Hershey. <laughs> Hershey bars. That's the other thing. You just bring the Old Bay. <laughs> oh. And we have a guest this week. He is a lovable person. If you get to know him. Making his long-awaited return is Rocker Dude, a.k.a. Korith. Hello, gentle friends, gentle listeners, and a special hello to Mental Night 5. Hey, buddy. How much did he pay you for that? Oh. Uh, just three bucks. Okay. I'm cheap. <laughs> are, are you on Cameo now, Corey? Is this that kind of thing? <laughs> well... You know, you could hit me up at cameo.com slash rocker dude <laughs> for uh, all your birthday and party needs. <laughs> but hello, good to be here. Uh, glad, glad to talk games and achievements and huntings and 101s with you guys. <laughs> Have you been gaming? So much gaming. Really? Way more than you. <laughs> okay on the good game count oh <laughs> <I mean. laughs> which is you know every month that's good wow the salt has begun right, let me okay, let me put it this way i've been gaming more than fufu how about that but so mm. has my kids <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> all right let's get into our question of the week Courtesy of Retro Chief. Dead Space is getting a remake that changes the original achievement list. Which games would you like to see remade with a revised list? Or which games achievement list should they absolutely not touch? All right, well, I'm going to go first and I'm going to say the game I'd like to see remade with a revised list is Army of Two. The entire trilogy. Now, if you can get rid of the multiplayer, get rid of the uh, the mask achievement that broke, remaster the graphics, I think that would be amazing. Those games are old enough that they should be remade. I think that would be really fun. Co-op games are always awesome. An army of two achievement lists that actually um, featured more achievement lists, more achievements for the co-op in it. Like, that's really where, I, like, I I agree. that That's kind of the failing of the army of two franchise, in my opinion, is the further on it went, the less special the co-op was. So, yeah, doing a remake and really highlighting that would be awesome. It was weird, because the first game had you had an achievement for beating the game with the computer AI mm -hmm. and that I think we did last because it was just stupid that was fun though um, yeah as the series went on I got a little crazy some crazy multiplayer modes were added and I don't re even remember them being all that good so this franchise, I'll, I'll say, did it need multiplayer? As we go on, I'll be ready to fight with some people about this stuff. But uh, Army of Two needs to be remade. Come on, EA. Uh, which game, uh, which if remade, should they absolutely not touch the achievement list? I would go with Portal 2. Portal 2 had a fantastic list that had you go through both single player and co-op. had a special co-op campaign that was different from the regular campaign. And it had a few little multiplayer achievements. Uh, one for doing a couple levels perfectly and 
of course, the famous achievement for playing, uh, doing like emotes with like seven different people or something like that. It was, it was fun. I met, I met some people doing that. They need to, uh, remake that game also or make a three. The game's over a decade old. That's sad. All right. I'll read some patron responses. P-Tart says, I would love to see Viva Pinata Trouble in Paradise remastered with an achievement list updated that doesn't involve the vision cam. But selfishly, I just want more Viva Pinata to play with achievements. All right. That is certainly a choice. Um, Viva Pinata was fun but I did not complete either of them. The vision cam was in the second game. And I remember you being able to put up like, I don't even remember website pages and you unlock some stuff automatically. So that was fun. Except the vision cam worked very poorly. So yeah, I would agree. Just get rid of those obviously nowadays. Uh, Pete Tart, of course, loves Viva Pinata so much that uh, once she completed those, I think accidentally she um, played the game uh, for Mr. Petard also. Just accidentally, I think. Something happened where he got the completions too. It was just, it's a mystery of how that happened. Any Viva Pinata fans here? Yeah, I'm a Viva Pinata fan. Um, I would agree with That's her. That's rare. It is rare. It's rare to find a fan. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think those games are great. I really don't know why, mm-hmm. like, Microsoft hasn't, you know, won't do anything with that IP. Um, I, I don't think it was, like, you know, a bad game or, you know, received poorly, right? I don't think so. Probably didn't sell well. Maybe it's just a kid, you know, it's more focused towards kids. Because uh, I can't really think a ton of stuff in their library that would go to that audience now. But no, I, I I agree. Bring on more Viva Pinata, please. Maybe even a Viva Pinata Battle Royale. Oh, well. Get out of here. Hey, we had the party game. Now it's time for the Royale game. How was that party game? Uh, that I remember friends? it being okay. Friendship party. Party animals. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a pun in there. Hey, would you like to see Viva Pinata? With a yeah. Remastered. Uh, sure. Why not? Uh, maybe they can make it fun. Um, that would be <laughs> a nice. <laughs> I, right, I you're asking got a into lot it. now. I, I'm just not into, you know, that's not my, it's not my cup of tea. Uh, if you will. Okay, so what Nate is suggesting is they make Rare Replay 2 <laughs> and where they just update all the 360 games. So you make like a new Perfect Dark Zero. and Yeah, if they would make Banjo-Kazooie. all those ones good too, that would be... <laughs> yes, exactly. Make Banjo-Kazooie good. Yeah, if they that made you know, good Conquer, Conquer good, then mm-hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> make You're those something. You should send eye. them an email. I am going to send them an email. Strongly I am the worded. Ultimate, I am the ultimate Karen. And it really grinds my gears when people give this next answer. Icefire, our newest friend in the patron chat, says, with continued rumors of a Gears of War remaster, I would definitely like to see lists for all three that remove the grinds. People who wanted to do so, those already did them. Sure they did. Give us achievements based around the campaign. I would prefer that focus. Well, let's keep going with that. Holiday Big Balls Barry. Huh, I think you could change that name now, Mr. Hawkeye. The, uh, you know what, keep it. The obvious answer is any Gears game. It's my favorite series, so when I hear people say they don't want to play the games because of the achievements, I feel like they're missing out. Amen. 
Uh, I'll also say Panzer Dragoon Remake needs a revised list or just one achievement changed. You can get all the achievements in an hour or two except for one, and that's to play the game for 100 hours. I know you can idle it, but it's such a dumb achievement for a game that's so short. All right. I know there's another couple of games that do that. Like that Star Balls. Yes. That, uh, that ball game that Michelle likes. Katamari Damacy. It's got that yeah, 50 that one. and 100 <laughs> hours. So you've got two achievements that oh. are well beyond the gameplay. <laughs> Ugh. So, yeah. Those should be right out. Uh, Chip of Papa says Gears of War 1 removed seriously. Yeah, good idea, Chip. They should come out with a Gears of War 1 remaster and remove seriously. Oh, wait. We already had a Gears of War 1 remaster and they left seriously in. They do not like you. If they removed or it, it was. would be seriously lacking. Oh. oh. Hey, oh. Boom. Boom. <laughs> well, going back to what Icefire said, I. Uh, from what I remember, the the, the uh, outside of the seriously achievements, the there's a lot of good achievements in Gears. Mm-hmm. Going through all the levels in co-op, um, using different weapons. I, don't yeah, know, I remember a good variety. Some clever stuff like cluster uh, luck in Gears Four. I think I can't remember if it's four or five where you're given a weapon early on and there's an achievement for carrying it through to a certain point in the campaign. Like there are plenty of yeah, that's four of interesting things on the list. But yeah, the the problem like I always think specifically of the earlier Gears games because I have not put the time in. But I don't necessarily even mind grinding for Gears. I just need more stuff on the way. Like give me a. 1250 achievement and a 2500 and a 5000 not just like you finished everything and it's 10,000 and oh by the way that's unreliable like i it was a little different in the era of the early gears games because they pretty much for whatever reason hard capped most games at 50 obviously there were games like that had 99 like orange box or red dead redemption had a bunch but they they were really stuck on that 50 and they could have gone to 55 and done a little extra there to not make it feel so awful, I think. Moving on from the Gears talk. Michelle, you're up. All right. Well, I will start by reading some patron responses uh, that are not Gears related. GT3 option fan says, Avatar The Last Airbender, The Burning Earth. Because may- then maybe that game might actually get played. So, yeah, that's a a fair point. A remake of that game with a list that actually encourages playing more than the first, whatever it is, 20, 30 seconds. That is definitely something to consider. (laughs) I mean, if that game was released with a normal list, it would have never even been talked about ever. It's not like anybody talks about it as a game for its merits, though. You know, they like. Nobody really stands up in defense like, hey, it was pretty good. Literally, this is the only reason that people talk about it at all. Like, I don't think that that's a terrible idea because I couldn't even tell you if it is good or bad. Because there aren't even people who've played it enough to, like, vouch for, hey, you know, it's actually a pretty okay game. You know, I played the first hour. Right. There's nothing like that. I mean, mean, Nate's a huge Avatar fan, so I'm sure he's played it um, Um. for hours. (laughs) <laughs> see. Is it related Air to Ben 10? What? Air Ben 10. Oh, God. Air Ben Tender. <laughs> He's going to go on, on a bender after uh, listening to this. <laughs> Skeptical Mario says Cameo. Cameo had good ideas, but as a launch title, it didn't implement them very well. The game would greatly benefit from improved graphics, controls, interface design, and so on. The achievement list is likewise horrible, with half of the achievements being zero gamer score for playing in various extra modes. Agree. Cameo definitely feels like um, it feels like it's time. It was one of those games that was sort of transitional from, you know, PlayStation 2, GameCube era, moving up into the newer generation. 
It has all those same wonky camera control issues that a lot of the platformer, 3D platformers of the time had. But Mario's right. It had some interesting level design and some uh, different gameplay mechanics. The, the main character could adopt different skills, essentially, from other character types. Uh, from I think they were from bosses that you defeated throughout the game. And that was interesting. But yeah, the list was terrible. I, I agree. That's that's a real good shout, Mario. I know you've played this too, uh, L. Would you also, uh, you, I, you would advocate for keeping the co-op achievements though, right? I mean, no. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to remember. The regular game wasn't co-op, right? We just kind of did right. it. No, there was the ones to get like the S ranks or something. Those I don't, I don't care for those type of achievements. But yeah, them being worth zero gamers score on top, just yeah, not a great list. And if it was redone with better graphics and better controls, like Mario said, yeah. Like there's something about that game that's definitely memorable and has good ideas. I remember playing and saying, "Yeah, there's a lot of good good stuff in here." Just right, it's just not a whole lot of fun to play. Fully realized, right? Yeah. All right, moving on. Um, Vulgar Latin says, "Friday the Thirteenth. The game is an amazing game to play with a group that most of you won't play because it has a horrible list." Remove the grind and it becomes much better. Uh, has anyone here played Friday the 13th? Oh, that would be mm. me. Yep. With Vulgar. Uh, agree? Uh, sure. I'm, I'm of the mind that you shouldn't not play a game you want to play because of the list. But hey, that's just me. Uh, if the grind wasn't there, yeah, I bet a lot of other people would. And it was fun with a group of friends in a dino bull, for sure. <laughs> The Dino Bull Factor. I mean, I definitely watched clips of <laughs> Dino playing that game. <laughs> <laughs> and then Volker actually uh, got extra credit and answered both parts of the question and, and also answered which game they should absolutely not touch and suggested that the orange box list should be left alone if that's ever redone. Uh, it's a perfect mix of easy, hard, and wacky. Only change it if they add new games. So yeah, Orange Box is, is a good list. I think that the Portal Challenge maps are maybe a little step too far, but that's just because I'm awful at them. And I don't know how I'd feel about that if you couldn't cheese your way through most of the actual Orange Box achievements, but I think that's a good shout. And then uh, the final Patreon response I have here is uh, MDP, who actually appropriately answers Rocket League for a change. A new Rocket League list would be awesome. What? You can come up with endless possibilities. And yeah, if they remastered Rocket League, like I I can only speak for myself, but I definitely went through and just did the like bot matches and knocked out a whole bunch of the achievements that way. And I definitely come to regret that because the game is a lot of fun to play and it would have been fun to just sort of earn them as I played. So a, a remastered list that encouraged more gameplay, like encouraged you to actually try doing aerials or whatever else. Like I know, Corey, you've certainly done... Uh, your share of Rocket League. How, how would you feel about that one? So a game like Rocket League doesn't need a remaster, but I do. Yes. I, I think I would like if games as a service games would put out, um, even if it was just yearly, uh, yearly updates for achievements. Uh, I, there might be, you know, some people, some games do that in a sense, but I, I think that it's catering to a audience that, you 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 are losing or wouldn't get for relatively low cost. It can't be that much to update your game to add more achievements. So I, I would love mm -hmm. that. That would be great. Yeah, I agree. I, th I think that's as long a really as it's good not call. play for five hundred more hours and you're done. <laughs> they got to come up with a little bit of variety. Well, they've released all these new game types, like the heat seeker mode and things like that. They they come in a rotation, so obviously there's some concern with that. That you know, if you don't get them while they're in rotation, that might lock you out of achievements for a while. But there are definitely other ways they could make you go through and, and, and do stuff with achievements that would make you experience the game differently. So I would like to see that. But uh, speaking of me, so my choice for a game that if they were to remaster it and I'd like to see the original list completely revised is Fear. Because we've talked recently plenty about how... Mm. The fear, uh, fear one in particular, gives you something like forty-five gamer score for finishing the campaign. 
which is awful and is a big reason why uh, it's showed up so much on the never ending stories competition lists for people because it just it's it doesn't reward you for playing the campaign and it's I think somewhat difficult and there's no achievement for beating the campaign on the lowest difficulty. You do have to at least beat it on the the difficulty above the lowest difficulty. And there's another achievement for finishing it on the hardest difficulty. I'm intrigued by fear. I've been intrigued by it as a game for a long time. And I'm sure whenever I get around to playing it, it, it it's like we say about many games, it's going to feel like a game of its time. Being able to play that remastered, you know, with all the kind of cool sound design and, and visuals and whatever else that they can certainly put to use now, plus a new list, I, I think that would really engage people. And I'm totally cool with keeping any multiplayer in there, but it doesn't need to be as heavy a portion of the list. So that would be my vote on that side. For a game they should absolutely not touch, uh, I mean, this is going to be a weird choice, but Peggle 2, I'm going to go with that. Because that list was awesome and fun, and it made you learn the different character types and what they did and how their stuff worked. And the achievements all had, like many of the achievements, the ones for objectives, had achievement-related names, which was cool. They leaned into the whole achievement thing, which we don't see a lot from developers. So I would say just leave that alone. And I also just, I really want more Pickle. So that's what I've got. Okay, thank you, Mr. MDP, for a good answer for once. Kush Moose, you're up, buddy. Alrighty. Uh, Eruteric says, Dust and Elysian Tale. I've never heard of this game, but remove the <laughs> challenge room achievement. If not that, then Lost Odyssey and change the achievement for needing all chests, just needing the ones with the seeds in them. A fairly rare item. Okay. Uh, Chesno, I have no... Wait a minute. That was no an easy achievement. Suck. Was that? I don't remember those challenge rooms being too bad. Yeah. What about you, uh, Michelle? Do you remember uh, carrying him through them? Stop it. <laughs> I'm just asking. He he finished it's the game well question. before me. So, so no, I, I didn't carry him oh. through those. But I... Oh, okay. Before, before we got the patron answers uh, all set up here to read, and before I made my choice with fear... My other choice was going to be all those early JRPGs on Xbox that compelled you to collect all the items. Those achievements are terrible because the worlds are large and there are so many dungeons and shops and things. And they're so it's so easy to miss one thing and there's no way to catalog it. That is an excellent answer. Absolutely get rid of that. Okay. I have no opinion of Lost Odyssey. That's a long game I'll probably never touch. Uh, Chesno says... I would like to play Mortal Kombat MK9 or Mortal Kombat versus DC, but the achievement list is insane on both. So I'd love to play them with the list similar to MK11, where it's more manageable uh, than play every character for 10 hours. Uh, Wild West 08. This is a great answer. It says, I would like to see an <laughs> X-Men Wolverine remaster with an updated list. I think that's it. It's game over. He won. Uh, <clears throat> maybe an arena mode with enemies and bosses. You can go berserk with your powers. Uh, I would love this to happen, and I would just love more Wolverine. The game I was just looking at has 50 achievements. It was so much fun. I don't know if I've ever mentioned it before, but I had a great time with that game, and I would love to do it again uh, if we could just change the way the, the movie ended and the video game and that last boss just get, make get rid of that. Or don't make it happen. Or do the uh, do the uh, Wolverine, not sorry, not the Wolverine, the Deadpool movies version of the end of Wolverine. That would be fun, too. Um as for me, I, you know, it's hard for me to remember every game I've ever played uh, and what deserves the most. So I'm just going to look, you know, as I was doing this, I was looking through my list and just certain things popped out to me. And I, the thing I hate maybe the most are games with 10 achievements. It's like they're doing the bare minimum. Those can be redone. They're obvious candidates to be redone. Uh, I really enjoyed Song of the Deep. Um, it was an indie Metroidvania from Insomniac developers. So hmm. uh, it was a kind of a you know a side project or you know a, a labor of love from an Insomniac developer and team uh, to make this this game. And it's it's only got what is that eight thousand two hundred and forty five people have played it. Um, so. I really enjoyed it. I thought the combat was a little bit lacking. I think they could tighten all that up. 
it was a good looking game. Uh, they've got a lot of opportunity to, to do that. Unfortunately, it is Insomniac, so this will never happen um, for the Xbox. Um, and the problem is that the achievements, I believe, just looking through them, most of them out of 10 are for progression. Uh, there's one for purchasing all the upgrades. Um, yeah, you know, there, there's one for killing a boss as uh, the character in outside of the sub. And you, if you take a single hit, if I recall, you die. So it was kind of like, okay, you're, you're killing a boss with the character that can take one hit and die. Uh, so that would be, for me, a, a game I'd love to see remastered, redone, tighten up the combat, and give us a whole bunch of achievements. Things that are, you know, more fun, situational, or just, you know, crazy ways to play the game that maybe you wouldn't have done before uh, that make you go around and do them. And so the other side of that coin is games that uh, could be redone and you wouldn't want to touch anything. I, I know this, it's not going to be my favorite game, obviously, uh, but I would say Redeemer Enhanced Edition. I really enjoyed this game. It's got 40 achievements, so... That's at least consistent. Uh, and they did a good job of mixing in progression, uh, unique stuff per level, clever achievement names, and tying them to what you're doing in the achievement. Um, that was just a really fun game uh, with 2,799 people playing. Uh, so it could use some more love. Uh, it goes on sale and, you know, for cheap uh, fairly often. That I I'd love to see that done again uh just so i can play it again get more achievements even if they're the same achievements i'd be happy with that what about you Corey? well first i'm going to read philip wendell because he said bully and i love me some bully i still have mm. a sliver of hope for bully too it's not dead in my heart um <laughs> and he says he wants to pick that one not because the list is bad but he wants to experience it uh, a second time around, but just a bit different. And you know what? That is a perfectly acceptable answer. I am all for that. He, he also said GTA, but take all, all the multiplayer stuff. Uh, double secret probation. You can't do that, sir. That's not in the rules. Um, moving on to Chewy. Uh, he really wants to see the 360 era of shooters that have good stories with them remade. Uh, those would be like Chronicles of Riddick, The Darkness 1 and 2, Condemned 1 and 2. But he wants to also remove the multiplayer stuff. So uh, you guys do not like multiplayer achievements. Duly noted. Now, wait a minute. I No, what do you mean duly noted? <laughs> I say double down, make a co-op version of Bully and call it Bullies. And <laughs> you go around trashing the school. And it's a battle royale. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> with pinatas cinco de mayo <laughs> um nate have you done any of the gta 5 multiplayer i've I done forget. some of it yeah but uh, is when it there was bad? that big rush is it, is it bad or just grindy right it's or hard? grindy it's grindy and okay. a little buggy from from mm. remembering some stories from Crandy talking about it and uh and now, Fug I, talking I would about it. say that GTA is big enough to where and it's really separated enough where that could be its own thing. A la crackdown. Oh, that did well. Well I mean they did that in uh Red Dead Redemption <laughs> too, right? They uh they there's no separate is, is there well, a standalone they, multiplayer? There is there? a standalone I'd, multiplayer. And it ties into the same achievement list, but I'm pretty sure there's no stack on that, but they, they did sell it uh, as, as a standalone. Yeah. Well, GTA online, they could sell it as a standalone and still make money. But uh, for the last patron response, G T three option fan, he wants to pick OG games, OG Xbox games, which is where my brain was searching around when I was going to answer this question. So he wants to do the likes of Morrowind or a remake of KOTOR, which I'm not foo-foo. I can't speak on Morrowind or KOTOR, really. But I would play KOTOR if they you know, gave it to me with achievement. So I'm all for that. Um, he has heard great things about both. And, but the, no achievements, just no motivation. That's what that equals. When it comes to me, I've said it before. I'll say it again. It's kind of a cop-out answer because it 
does technically exist. They they made an HD version of Munch's Odyssey, an Xbox exclusive, and it is everywhere except the Xbox One platform. Uh, they they did not port it anywhere with Xbox achievements tied to it, and it. it I'm I'm like looking at the list on True Trophies right now. Uh, it's a good list. You know, you have a couple dozen story related achievements. And then you have a mixture of kill X amount of enemies, possess enemies, escape without touching, you know, a mine, things like that. Uh, and then there is ones that I don't care for as much, but I kind of, I appreciate them. They're for beating the games, basically like a low percent and a high percent in like Metroidvania terms. So it not only gets you through the story, it uh, tells you to interact with the enemies or the, do the combat a little differently than you might normally and then play the game completely different by saying don't do this or do this a lot so th that's what i want uh and that's how they can give it to me um for something that i would like to see remastered and don't want to change as, as much as like i'm not that skilled of a gamer where i have got these completions before similar to you, Nate, where you hate 10 achievement lists. I don't like 200 gamer score games. <laughs> so <laughs> I want to, uh, I can't pick the whole Xbox live arcade library, but, uh, it's hard to pick one game cause that's such, such a good time in gaming. Uh, so it's funny. I was looking at, like top Xbox Live Arcade games. Uh, and a lot of the games on the list I was reading already have those remasters, but none of the ones that I thought of before going there were there. And that is the Twisted Pixel games. I, I want to see those brought back Whoa. to life. Even the, even the super duper hard Explosion Man hardcore mode. That's fine. Keep it. I want to play those games again, but with, with more gamer score. I think that's great. I just don't know that that's possible anymore. They're, they're, I, aren't they like part of Meta now? So I'm not sure. Like, I guess Microsoft published the games. Like, I'm not sure where ownership of their titles actually lands, but that's a great, 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 great suggestion. Mom. Yeah. And, and, and <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't think about that, but you, you did bring up a good point with Peggle. Like, bring the PopCap games too. Those were great as well. Yeah, yeah, another oh. Plants vs. Zombies that isn't modern warfare related or garden warfare related would be great. <laughs> right. <laughs> they should make a modern warfare one. <laughs> I mean, they basically did. Ultra violent one. <laughs> All right. That was a good question, Retro Chief. Thank you very much. Moving on to Games Showcase, our esteemed guest, Corey. Shall we go first? All right. Well, I've I've been playing a bunch of games, completing a bunch of games. Uh, just check out my period summary. It does not like me. I've started minimal games this month. Um, and, and a lot of the good ones you guys have been talking about. So kudos to you guys. Uh, so I'm going to pick one that is newer and that you haven't talked about. And that is Wave Tail. One word, Wave Tail. Uh, T-A-L-E. Yeah. Kind of tell, uh, because you, this game is a story game that is also action adventure. It's by our main people over at Thunderful Games, which is a a good publisher of uh, uh, of, of mine. Uh, you know they're they're up there, and this game is it's action adventure. It's three D platforming. Uh, they throw some fetch quest into their story that they give you, which is kind of a sad story. Um, you're going and trying to collect, uh, items without spoiling any part of the story, uh, to, uh, help this post-apocalyptic world. And what drew me to the game is the art style. It's, it's almost kind of like a watercolor art style, uh, a lot of water, uh, there's a lot of water surfing out there. Um, and, and you're basically like going from these islands uh, that are usually close together um, to accomplish these fetch questy type tasks and side quests. Uh, and once you do that, then you're going to 
go across the ocean to uh, another like small subset of islands and kind of do the same thing. And you're going to do that a, a few times until you get uh, to the, the, the main end boss and eventually complete the game. It's not a long game. Uh, I did it in six hours, basically. Uh, probably that was probably over like three nights, you know, a couple hours each night. Um, all of the achievements, which is only 14. Sorry, Koosh. It is above your 10 limit, but only 14. Uh, I think 10 of those might be story related. And then the other four are just a specific side quest that you have to get and do. Uh, and they're all the same. They're basically speed challenges. Um, the, the game itself is can be boring, uh, especially when you're going from point A to point B across a large body of water. While they make it really nice to look at and you can do these like jumps and sometimes there's lines to connect to, you almost feel like you're doing a combo like in Tony Hawk. But but you can only do that for so long before you it just starts to bore you, uh, especially after the first few hours. And you're like, OK, I've done this. 10 times already, you know, I, I'm going to have to sit here for literally like five minutes just holding up to go to my next destination. So it has some lull points in it. Um, the only other negative about the game, because it is a beautiful game and the voice acting is, is really good, um, is the price. It's a $30 game. It does not feel like a $30 game. It's probably more in that $15 price range, to be honest. Uh, so if you see it for a deep discount and you like 3D platforming, because that's really my favorite part about this game, uh, pick it up. Full price, you might be a little disappointed, uh, but otherwise it's an easy completion and it doesn't take too much of your time away. Now I have, I have a very important question. So there, there seems there's one secret achievement on the list. So if people are uh, they don't want to know, cover your ears for about the next thirty seconds. But there's an achievement in here to oh. hear all of someone's <laughs> puns. And I just need to know, since you've completed oh, the game, uh, and yes. it, it looks like Nate has completed the game as well. Are these like Mario level puns or L level puns? Because this is super important for us to know I if know. we're going to go jump into this game. <laughs> if I recall, they're like bad jokes, like dad jokes. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> like... I'm looking at one right now. So, small spoiler. What vegetable is forbidden on all ships? Mm, what? Leeks. Oh. Mm, oh. Wow. But, um, yeah, it's like that. <laughs> so, Terrible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it, that's about on par with the game. Like, it, it, I hate to put it in a bad light because it is a beautiful game and it's okay. It's just... It's just okay. I, I hope Koosh would agree with me and not, yeah, you mm. know, put me down too much on <clears throat> not thunderful games. Just there. remind me of no. It's it is beautiful, and I I did spend a couple minutes just looking at the water. Uh, Definitely, <laughs> not gonna lie. I stood on the island. I just looked at the water. I was like, wow, it's really pretty. Um, but yeah, it, I I thought that the the traversal. Was okay. Um, I wish that it didn't break itself up so much. So, like when you're trying to do those long lines from area to area, it just it sort of felt like they weren't designed perfectly. Like I couldn't do the helicopter move off of a jump and then get to the next thing every time. Uh, sometimes yes, but then when it did that, uh, especially during the races, there were these little race sections where you had to beat somebody's uh, time on a course. This little challenge and the the stuttering between like going really fast on the rails and then when you're helicoptering or when you're just doing like a jump, like a double jump in the air to try to get the right distance, that just felt off a little bit. And I wanted to keep that same speed uh, if possible, but that, that was a minor gripe. And then of course the combat, uh, it wasn't necessary. And if they're going to put it in there, make it good, uh, make, it, right. make it necessary, make it fun. Uh, the combat that was there was uh, not great. And uh, for the most part, except for the bosses, uh, you could have skipped it. Like it was pretty easy to just like run past things and not have to deal with them. Yeah. Um, and much like in my little deposition there about this game that I forgot the combat because it is so forgettable. It is like literally <laughs> smack, smack, smack that guy's down. And you do that, you know, like 20 times probably throughout the whole game. I think only one point in time, one 
kind of a bossish battle is where it's necessary. Otherwise, yeah, you don't need to do it at all. Yeah. Yeah, but it was a pretty game, and yeah, that full price, $30, that's a, that's a hard pill to swallow, but uh, if you get the, this on sale or it went to Game Pass, this would be an easy and pretty uh, pretty enjoyable. It took me seven and a half hours, because I spent a lot of time trying to find the challenges. Uh, like They could have done a better job of, of marking, marking those on the map uh, as you passed them or whatever, just leave them on there. But, uh, yeah, I'm just checking out other games by the same developers, um, and Lost and Random is there, so it... It, well, that's in there because of EA play, but you know, better than zero percent chance it does go to Game Pass. So just put a pin in Wavetail if that sounded at all good, or if you like video game water because it is pretty water. <laughs> Some good water. <laughs> I'm watching a video and looking at the water. No, Nate, is this a little bit above your daughter's skill? Yes. Level. Yeah. No. Okay. No. She now. Okay. So my daughter likes to play parts of games and she had a great time <laughs> navigating the water and jumping on rails and things like that. But if she, there was ever anything that looked like an ink blot that you had to fight or could fight, <laughs> she would give me the controller back, but uh, she really liked the, <laughs> yeah, she liked the water portions. Yeah. This looks like you would like this neat, like a reminds I me of like it. Ratchet and Clank <laughs> and stuff like that. It yep, is a good yep. job of luring you in, but then I, I think an overarching opinion is very just meh. It's not bad. It's just not great. Overstays its welcome, Will. I, I don't even know if I would say that. It's six hours. That's that's a little harsh, I think. Like yeah. It's a great looking game. And like you were saying, yeah, the, the voicing is good. Uh, it feels like, hey, this is a great idea. Let's do more with this. Yes. Like They didn't quite get there. Uh, like they could have done more with the game and it would have been fantastic. Okay. Looks like that was Wavetail. Michelle, you're up. I am. I'm so excited to speak about the game I played for the last week. And that is a Game Pass title called Citizen Sleeper. Citizen Sleeper is primarily developed by one person. There was a, another person who did art, another person who did... Um, music but most of the game is designed by a single individual published by fellow traveler and the developers come or publish or develops under the name jump over the age so <clears throat> with all that out of the way citizen sleeper really shines as a game of narrative does not have active gameplay so there's no hack and slash there's no you know shoehorned in weird platforming element it is it is a story and it is excellently written but there is a gameplay loop, and that's where the classifications on TA come up, and they are they don't feel quite right. TA classifies Citizen Sleeper as a role-playing game and card and board. I don't love either of those. It's sort of role-playing, I guess, in that it's, again, a big story. It's Most of the gameplay involves dice, which I guess makes it card and board, but they don't feel right. So with all that said... Citizen Sleeper, uh, you play a character who is nameless, but is effectively a quote unquote sleeper. Sleepers are people who had their consciousness put into a essentially android body. And that body is in uh, servitude to this company called s and Arp. And even though you are sort of just a fraction of somebody else's mentality, you, as a sleeper, have your own experiences in your own life, and you've led that, and you and other sleepers made some sort of agreement, it never really goes into that, to escape this servitude. And as the game starts, you're just discovered, and you don't know what happened to the other sleepers who took this quest with you, you have no idea, you're just on this place called Erlen's Eye, and you have to figure it out. And where Citizen Sleeper really shines is in the writing of all of these characters that you engage with. There's a very first person who finds you. His name is Dragos, I think. And he's like a ship uh, builder and, and the interactions you have with him and then how he eventually kind of grows uncomfortable with your presence. You meet this person named Feng and Feng is good at like going through different, um, like sort of like hacking and, and how he does his thing to try to help you. Cause everyone's trying to help you until you meet the next person who says, no, they're not really trying to help you because this isn't really the way things work here. It's just 
again, the writing is really the strength, but it's not just a visual novel. So you're not just going to be reading text. The way the gameplay is developed is every day it, it's is called a cycle. And throughout each cycle, you get a certain number of dice that you can use to complete tasks. You have two things that you have to monitor. Your condition, which is the general state of your body, and your energy, which is basically how fed you are, if you're hungry or, or tired or things of that nature. And as you do different quests around Erlen's Eye, you're going to use your energy. And as your energy depletes, when it gets too far to the bottom, that starts to affect your condition. As your condition depletes, you start to lose dice for each day. When you're at max, you have five dice that roll at the beginning of each day. And eventually it'll knock down to four or three, two, and so on. But you can recover these through various things that happen throughout uh, Citizen Sleeper. To go into the game too much more would be to spoil things. Um, I really enjoyed it. I think I, I was doing some reading on the development of the game. And the developer had said that what motivated them was in playing Mass Effect, they were so drawn to the side characters and the interesting kind of stories that never get explored there. And the, you can see that fingerprint on Citizen Sleeper because all of the characters that you interact with, none of them is a main character alongside you. None of them winds up your sidekick. None, none of them winds up your primary second, but they're all really engaging. All right. So I am... Um, nice. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Like, I, I wish I I know none of you have played it, and I kind of wish someone had so we could talk about it more. But like, I I also know that um, even in having those discussions about well, what did you think about this character, or what did you think about their motivation, uh, it, it's something that you really have to go through. So this is where achievements become a complicating factor, though. Citizen Sleeper is marked on TA as I think an eight to ten hour completion. It took me something closer to fifteen. I've spoken to Kronos too, and it took him something closer to 15 too. If you just mash A and get through the, the story beats, you can finish it quicker. Now, you might be delayed some based on your dice rolls, because again, higher dice rolls you're going to be able to use to accomplish tasks more quickly, but you really lose out on the experience of playing the game. Most of the achievements you earn by just finishing quest lines with different characters. See them through to the end, you're going to get an achievement. There are, though, seven different ending achievements. You can get most of them in one playthrough. There are a couple that are mutually exclusive, though, so you will have to do at least two playthroughs. A secondary playthrough will take about an hour, because at that point, you're going to know what to do and what to look for. So you can really truncate the game and not even open various elements that you would do in your first natural playthrough. So if any of you does decide to play it, play it naturally once. Just read the story. Make your decisions. Just to be clear, the decisions don't really change too much, which is why it doesn't fall into that like telltale game style thing. You, it doesn't matter too much in the end. But play through, see how the story goes, and then just do what you have to do to finish up the endings real quick. But yeah, especially like if you're looking for something story driven that is engaging and kind of covers different like relevant topics about like how you think and interact in places and how hard it is to trust people because these people the people you interact with aren't necessarily lying to you they're just giving you their version of events uh it was it was awesome and there's more content coming for it i think and i think it's all supposed to be free but i don't think it'll add achievements because citizen sleeper does have the first expansion already in it but there are no achievements attached to doing that part of the content and i did do that part of the content too because i just i wanted more so i went through and played that even though i didn't need to but um, so that may come, but I don't think it'll add any achievements to the game. I don't know if the game itself visually uh, is helping itself grab more users because it sounds great. But I'm like looking at screenshots and and gameplay, and it just, I mean, it almost looks like yeah, like almost like a visual novel in a sense. Um, I, I I'm agree. not getting the yeah. dice rolls from it, but yeah. Well, because you don't actively roll dice, right? Like, it's not like you'll come up with something like, say, um, a ship just docked and you have two options. You can either help welding the ship or you can help uh, disarming the ship. And you have your five dice you were given at the beginning of the day and you choose, oh, my dice with a five is going to go here. My die with a one is going to go here. So it's not that you get there and go, OK, I'm going to do this now. Let's roll a die. 
Uh, so I agree. It it doesn't it doesn't have an active gameplay element. So it does look like a visual novel, which is why it's so difficult to categorize because it doesn't quite play like a visual novel. Visual novels are usually really marked by choice, even if the choices right. don't change much. That's how it they branch and you get to the different endings. It's not really what happens in Citizen Sleeper. Like if there was a book of Citizen Sleeper, I would be so excited to read it. But I don't think it would quite work that way either, because again, there's really the the secondary characters are all still very clearly secondary characters, but they're all compelling. I, I understand though why watching a video wouldn't encourage one to play might be a good game to find a long play of if you're not interested in playing it and just see what happens but nothing's vocalized so you would need to be able to either sit and read the dialogue or find someone who's reading the dialogue well there are hardly any bad reviews out there and it it, it came up in even game of the year conversation so yeah definitely don't uh don't look away at this one if that sounded at at least a bit interesting right there gory (laughs) I think, yeah, don't sleep on it. Har, har, har. Don't sleep on it. I, I don't citizen that, sleep on this one. I think <laughs> it came go. up against High on Life in the TA Game of the Year voting, which was sort of where it hit its end, because High on Life definitely had a lot of uh, praise and, and all that stuff going for it, so that would have been hard. And Citizen Sleeper is definitely a... Uh, vote. Right, it's not, it's not been tracked as, by as many people, because exactly, which, if you just look at it, it doesn't look super compelling. The artwork is fine. And there's like there's music in the game, but it's mostly ambient. It doesn't really contribute that much. And, and I know I keep repeating it, but it's really in the writing. The writing is is very very good. Yeah, I saw some long play videos and it's like fifteen parts of like an hour each. So yeah, like you said, but I think they went through each and got all the individual endings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's about what it would take. All right. Well, we're two for two with games so far. Wave Tail and Citizen Sleeper. Koosh, we're going to make it three for three with good games. Sure. Um, but first, <laughs> let me back up to last week when I talked about Ben 10 Power Trip and said, what could go oh. wrong? Oh, uh, boy. Well, let me tell you. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, so there were there were reports that Ben 10 was a little bit glitchy with regards to one particular achievement, and it turns out uh, that's true. It happened happened to me. Um, and that achievement was for getting all of uh, – or destroying all of the decibel concerts. Apparently, there's a bug in the way it keeps track of those, and you need to do it all in one sitting. So what I ended up doing was uh, getting everything I could possibly get out of the game initially, which was, um, you know – not so bad. Uh, and then I had to do a second playthrough, which uh, took about two hours, three hours, um, just to do all of the decibel concerts from beginning to end. You have to, un- you have to do about two hours of story to unlock one extra, um, or I guess you have to unlock two forms, two monsters that allow you to get to every decibel concert, but then you can knock those out really quickly. So it wasn't that bad. It, it could have been worse. Uh, and then there's, um, if you didn't pick up all of the upgrade points to get all of your skill sets upgraded across them, it, it, there's a good thing in that it keeps an internal track of uh, how many you have done across each one. So if you only got, let's say it takes 20, uh, if you only got 18 on your first playthrough uh, and you on your second playthrough, if you put them into like power and you get two more, it'll count as complete completed a full one even though you only have two in that second playthrough so i didn't run into that issue but if you're having problems finding all those you just do that as part of your second playthrough and get that done uh it's not so bad so even though it does (laughs) glitch it's not the worst glitch out there so this week i'm talking about a game uh called infernax it's in game pass and it came up on freemholio's prediction for what's gonna be leaving game pass (laughs) potentially uh, in the next month, and th- this has a 50-50 chance, according to Freem. Um, so I figured, since I'm doing pretty well on the Game Pass chase uh, for the end of this month, I would get started on next month, and this is the game that I picked. Now, I dove this when it first came out, because that's what I do, and um, <laughs> spent a long time coming back to it, which ended up being very scary. Um, this game is an action platformer with multiple endings, 
Uh, and those endings require you to play through the game multiple times because uh, they kind of lock you out of certain pathways. Uh, the game has a morality system built into it, so you'll have the ability to take some quests uh, and perform certain actions on those quests that kind of fork off and give you morality points towards good or evil. Um, and there are achievements for doing a fully good playthrough uh, where you can, you can make a couple mistakes, but not many. Uh, and you can do a fully evil playthrough. Uh, once again, there's a little bit of wiggle. And then there's a good playthrough and evil playthrough. And then there's the switcheroo, uh, the redemption uh, ending, where you start out down the path of evil. You get to the point where you uh, the bad guys accept you as one of them. And then you start doing good things to get your uh, morality ratio back above evil uh, or back above zero so that you're into the good category. Now, there's no there's no visual indication that uh, that you have done this, but there are hints throughout the game. Certain people will talk to you and they'll only give you quests if you're on the good side of the morality. Uh, and some of your spells will either be augmented uh, with evil taints to them. So like your heal spell, well, you can just heal yourself or you can heal yourself by stealing the health from the people around you. Uh, that would be the evil option. Um, so <laughs> there's like evil tints to all these uh, these skills that you can get. This game plays a lot like a Castlevania from the NES era, um, where there's precision platforming. You have to take into account knockback. Uh, so if you jump in the air and you get knocked back, okay, am I going to fall into this hole and die? Um, there are two modes to play it. You can play it in classic or you can play it in relaxed. Uh, so just like jeans. And um, the classic <laughs> gives you fewer and farther between uh, save points or checkpoints where you can save your game and continue on. Uh, and the, I guess the new version, which I never actually played that, I should have done that, um, is uh, a little more forgiving. So the classic is, is a little bit harder, a little less forgiving. The newer version, the relaxed version, the relaxed fit version, if you will, uh, is, is more uh, comfortable and allows you to uh, save uh, more frequently. Uh, now, I don't know if that's going to affect one of the achievements, which is saving at every save point. That would be interesting. Um, I don't know. Uh, I've read that like the inside save points, like the additional ones, I think don't uh -huh. count. But They don't count. There, there is an achievement for completing it on classic mode, so you have to do it yes. that mode at least once. You have to do that at least once. Now, this game, uh, like all good NES games, has a Contra code. So you, at the very beginning of the game, uh, at the start menu, yes. you, can, you can enter the Contra code, spoiler, <laughs> and that will make the game so much easier. Now, I don't recommend doing that from the start. Uh, I played the game my first time through with the regular character, which is a melee-based character. Um, and these, this Konami code basically has you come in as a Contra-like character. I mean, because it's, it's the Konami code, uh, and your character looks like he's straight out of Contra. And um, there's a spell that gives you, like, uh, weapon power. If you're playing the original game, uh, or the original version of the game where you're a melee character, your, your mace becomes uh, infused with holy power. You just start shooting like a single beam across the screen. Uh, if you're playing in this other mode, this contra mode, uh, you have basically the spread gun. It's, it's literally the spread gun from contra, which is fantastic. I love it. Um, most of the achievements in the game are for progression. I shouldn't say most. I always say that. Sorry. There are progression-based achievements. There are um, situational-based achievements like reflecting projectiles and defeating three enemies. Uh, the solutions on TA give you some good uh, places where you can do that. Um, so if you're having trouble doing it naturally, you can just look those up. Every screen you go into is repopulated uh, after you leave it and come back. So if you mess up, you can just leave the screen and come back. Uh, that's another thing I should mention. Um the game does a good job with just allowing you to, to work through a, a screen at a time. And those screens may scroll, so they could actually be three wide and two tall. Um, when you die, you have to enter that room again and just do that room again. You don't go all the way back to a checkpoint, three rooms back. You just do that room over again. Uh, by default, you have one life. You can increase your lives up to three through uh, purchases at stores in the game, or you can use a cheat code, which is what I did, uh, to get 99 lives. Uh, I played about half of the game, maybe three quarters of the game, before I said, you know what, I'm not enjoying the difficulty spike in this game, and I would much rather play through 
and just beat each room naturally. Um, but I don't want to have to die three times, then go back to my save point. I just want those 99 lives. I'm just going to beat a room until it's done, and I'll move on to the next room. So I, I cut myself a little slack there. I also didn't feel like grinding for gold or experience points at, at a certain point. So I just said, you know what? I'm going to turn those cheats, on, cheats on as well. You can turn those on from the menu. You can enter them in the menu. You will not get the achievement by doing that. There's a, spur, a certain portion in the game about the, I'll say it's like three quarters of the way through the game, where there is a hidden room that is for backers of the game. And at the very end of that room is an altar where you can enter codes. And when you enter codes on that altar, you'll get the achievement for using a cheat code. Um, oh. all, of the, all of the guides had an invulnerability code. That would not work for me. I tried the invulnerability code. It did not work. I uh, entered there or entered at the menu. So I just said, whatever. Uh, so I never played through with invulnerability. Uh, but on my my other runs where I went through, uh, I absolutely used the machine gun. <laughs> I used the uh, jetpack because it just makes navigating the levels much, much faster. And with that jetpack, you can sequence break and then you can go get this spell very early on that allows you to teleport to any save point that would normally happen about halfway through or maybe like two fifths of the way through your regular playthrough. They wait to give you that. And they have a lot of fetch quests where you're going the same route back and forth and back and forth like four or five times. Um, so on your, your additional playthroughs, that'd be really annoying. So I totally recommend that you, um, you know, at least get that sequence breaking so that you're not, uh, not just, killing yourself and beating your head against the wall, having to do this fetch quest over and over and over again. Um, you, you can then get the thing, go to the place, warp back and drop it off. And, and it'll make your uh, additional playthroughs much nicer. Um, as for the story of the game, I thought the bosses um, were not that bad. Uh, they look a little bit difficult, but their patterns are pretty easy to recognize and beat. Um, the difficulty wasn't that bad. Of course, I did use cheats. Um, I think the last um, the last castle you have to do on the ultimate good kind of took on. It, it kind of like dragged on. There are a lot of mini bosses, and I thought that was actually the most challenging part of the game. Uh, the additional playthroughs were not so bad. Uh, I guess the ultimate evil had a... Um, I don't want to spoil anything. It has a different mechanic from the entire rest of the game, which I thought was a little bit refreshing, but that was also a little bit hard. Um, overall, is it a good game? I had fun. I found myself, maybe because I was playing so much of it all at the same time, I found myself singing the music, which is, you know, iconic in those classic NES games, like, you know, the Castlevania theme, the Metroid theme. Uh, I, so I, I did have this music uh, running through my head for a couple of days, uh, and that wasn't a problem for me. Um, so yeah, I, all in all, I recommend this game. It, it took me 17 hours and 17 minutes. Um, and I used some guides. Um, there's a wiki, I think from the developers. Uh, I'm not positive about that. There's an Infernax wiki that does a really good job of laying out what you have to do or a good pathway to get the ultimate ending, to get the ultimate evil ending, and to get the, uh, uh, the redemption ending. Uh, there are solutions on the site, but I found that the wiki was just much more straightforward. There was not a whole lot of figuring out process documented in the uh, in the solution or the text. You just get it straight from the wiki. So I'd recommend you do that if you're having some problems. Um, but yeah, I liked Infernex. I, I wow. also played Infernex in January and beat it. Um, much like you, Kush, dived it a long time ago and uh, I, I see the writing on the wall. So I, for all intents and purposes of this, I hope Infernex leaves Game Pass next month. I'm, I said it. <laughs> I threw it out there. Uh, I don't care. Um, but yes, it, it's it's a game that I don't think cheats will ruin your experience. Maybe first off, play a little bit, see how you like it. Um, it it's funny though, because I, I had a different experience than you, because when I dived it, I think, I, I think there's a, I'd have to see if there's an achievement for uh, using the... Uh, yes, it is. It's the Konami code. That's the one I dived it with, and I haven't been back since. Um, but I, I missed the whole minigun thing, so I even never saw it, the gun that you mentioned. That sounds awesome. I wish I would have picked it. Um, oh, yeah. But, but I, like, I never picked the jetpack either. I did the infinite jumps and and whatnot. Uh, the, the game's okay. I think like by the third playthrough, you're like, 
okay, I got this. We're speed running this game now. I'm going to submit a world record for it here soon. Um, and you know just exactly <laughs> yeah. what to do. Um, check out the fan fandom wiki that Kush mentioned. It has the no fluff walkthrough. And uh, the only bad part about the game is, is it, it is related to achievements is there is little to no wiggle room on a couple of those endings. Um, and then I, for me, it was my very last one. The one where you have to switch basically from bad to good. Um, I, there, I was not risking it at all and, you know, doing whatever I wanted to, to try to figure that out. I'm just going to follow the guide because you missed, you miss one quest and, and you're, you're off. You have to redo it. So, uh, that's where achievements, I think, like they drug the game on a little too long. Uh, even if they offered a different, you know, little story beat, but overall it's a fine game, you know, it's worth checking out, worth recommending. All right. So this game is 15 to 20 hours with cheats. Yes. Um, (laughs) It took me 17 with cheats. Yeah. So, I mean, TA estimates are going to be the quickest possible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? So that's crazy. Mm-hmm. So, How many playthroughs do you have to do? So <laughs> I, I think there's a way that you could cheese it to get three minimum, but I can't, mm-hmm. yes. I, I can't say for sure. It took me five. You absolutely can do it with three because um, you can save right before a certain event and complete the game, and that'll get you your good ending, and then you can do the event and get which gives you your ultimate good ending. You do the exact same thing with the evil walkthrough or the evil endings. You can save right before the, the final fight, beat that to get the evil ending, and then go do this other thing to get the ultimate evil ending. Uh, and then you can do your redemption. <laughs> so you could do it in three playthroughs with going back to your last save on the good and the evils. Uh, I did not do that. <laughs> I thought I messed up my ultimate good because I was still playing my my dive version from over a year ago. So the very first choice, I kept thinking, oh man, I picked the wrong choice because about halfway through the game, I realized, oh, I can't go undo this thing I did. Um, I can't undo that because I obviously made the wrong choice. Is that going to mess up my ultimate good ending? And I was like, oh man. And I got the very end of the game. I got the ultimate good. I was like, awesome. I then went in to do the ultimate evil and I screwed that up. Um, (laughs) So I, I ended up having to do an evil playthrough. I had to redo it to do the ultimate evil end th- uh, ending, and then I did the uh, the redemption. And just like you, Rocker, I was just like studying line by line, double checking, making sure I was doing that and only that from the wiki just to get the you know this redemption quest done in one. Yeah, so it seems like you need to do a lot of research and prep. It, it, it's, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard to say because this is one of those games where once you're done with it, you're like. Oh, I could half my time or at least take away 25% of uh-huh. the time. But if you're coming in brand new, it's, it's, it's hard to know that, that bit of knowledge that you haven't got mm-hmm. yet. Yeah. Like you said, the writing seems to be on the wall. This came into game pass February 14th of last year. I can't believe it's been a year already. I remember when this came out with the no, new hotness hated, for a little while. You hated your Lidos just like squeezing all that down into like two days. I would recommend you don't do that with this game. Uh, if you're going to play uh, it, if you're going to play it, give yourself, you, you can knock it out. You can get this done in a week pretty comfortably. Um, I think I did it in a week. It's definitely one that I would not recommend like doing one playthrough and, and sitting on it, you know, just knock out no. the whole thing. I mean, if they announced it, I would start immediately, but um, hopefully we get that news sooner than later. All right, so that was Infernax. So now it's my turn to talk about an 8-bit style Metroidvania game. And the winner of the month for January was Mummy Demastered. So unlike Infernax, this game is only, quote unquote, six to eight hours according to TA. <laughs> Which I think is a little low. Ha. Huh. Big ha. Huh. Mm. Huh. Big ha for that, so? right? Yeah. I don't know. I've probably already put six hours into it. I'm like halfway done. I have, but anyway. I have almost 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> really? 
I wouldn't. I, just, I wouldn't go by the the file time. Well, I guess. Well, uh, yeah, you. I'll let you, you talk on about it. I had a terrible yeah, exactly. in game part. <laughs> I. I mean, that time seems off. I mean, this but is anyway. one all of us have played, right? So, so we Master... should really be able to get into this. Yes. Yes. So, yes. Go ahead, El. All right. So, Mummy Demastered is based off of, I guess, the Mummy franchise, even though. There, from what I play, there really wasn't much story. There was this one dude that was telling you some stuff of where to go and what to do, which was nice. Um, but this definitely is a Metroidvania. And it was nice because I knew right away that there was an achievement for beating the game uh, without dying. And that was really the only missable that I knew of. So what you can do is whenever you save the game, you can quit out and copy your save file just in case and have a backup. Um, unfortunately, though, this takes away one of the hooks of the game, which is whenever you die, I believe you become a mummy and you um, have to then find where you died and get your stuff back, which is also a thing you do in Tunic. But uh, I only did that briefly because it's an achievement for doing that as well. But I have just been playing this one blind, and that's that's been refreshing. Just to go through and play a Vayner, explore yourself. I've had to look at a map maybe once or twice when I got stuck a couple times for an item I needed to progress. But other than that, I've left it alone. I do know that there's going to be some cleaning up later with finding all the relics and such. There's 50 relics to find. And they're scattered all over, and the map isn't great. So this game, I, uh, it's funny, because I consider this game a new game, but this is already a five-year-old game. 2017 it came out. So right off the bat, this game, for whatever reason, gets very highly praised. And I, maybe it's the high praise, but I find it just okay, or maybe even good, but not great as its four rating on TA might suggest, that it's pretty darn great. Well, m maybe think about when it came out versus what was out there for the genre, maybe. In the know. old days of 2017? <laughs> I mean, I, there's been some good games in the past five years. I had a similar discussion with oh, someone else I mean, about the rating. come out? Because four seemed high to me, too. But they pointed out that Mummy Demastered is a game that has not been available on game pass it's not been a games with gold so most people who are playing this mm -hmm. game are people who are actively seeking it out because and and you know sorry to step in here because i know you haven't quite finished your covering of the game but like it is better than average it, it's functional it does what it's supposed to do and if you're playing this because you really like metroidvanias or you're into the mummy franchise i guess it, it does do those things well. <laughs> but I think if this was a game in Game Pass that hit a broader audience, I, I do think you'd see that average number be quite a bit lower. I mean, yeah, Ori came out 2015, which is just unbelievable. That that's an eight-year-old game now. Unbelievable. Where does the time go? So, yes, I heard this game was great. I heard it had a great soundtrack. I heard all kinds of stuff. I mean, as I'm playing the game, I have the music on and nothing is anything I've been humming to myself the next day, like you had with Infernax, Nate. Um, had none of that so far. The title music's pretty cool, but that's all I've had so far. And I've had two really bad things that I do not like about the game. Uh, number one is that is the knockback. Whenever you get hit by an enemy, you go flying. So if you're climbing up platforms and you hit someone that you probably can't even see, you go flying down and have to reclimb again. And the enemies spawn every time you go into a room, so you just have to keep keep at it. Um, you know, as you start off, um, and you find out also when you save the game, you it doesn't refill your health. So much like its predecessors like Metroid, you have to find a room with little guys and keep shooting them and refill your health. There's also boxes around. 
there's plenty of places around to refill your health. And there are also ammo stations to refill your ammo. But it would really have been nice if just it was all in one place and you didn't have to go grinding enemies just to get your health back. That took a lot away from me already. Do you even remember that, Nate and Corey? Like, or is this so long uh, ago that I remember, just... like, going to a room that had an enemy or a lantern or a light or whatever right there, transitioning mm-hmm. and going back and go you know, do that a bunch until I got my health up. I do remember mm-hmm. that. Exactly. Yes. I don't think that. that I remember if... It's a bit of an old mechanic. That I think yeah. it's gotten and better also, in other games. And also, if you have f- full ammo, the ammo still pops out of the enemies, and it's so frustrating. Oh, yeah, because it's so a waste, like, wasteful drop. <laughs> yes. So the original Metroid on NES had the same thing, but Super Metroid 30 years ago solved this problem. When you had full health, health didn't pop out anymore. When you had full missiles, missiles didn't pop out anymore. You didn't have to do that. So those things right off... I don't like. Um, I do like actually playing the game. So I do like the the map. Um, what do you call it? Uh, game design, the map design. So when you get a, there's always that nice feeling when you get a new item, and then you loop back around and you find like, oh, okay, now I have a shortcut back to this area. So that's always fun in any Metroidvania. Um, with that said, the map itself, I don't really love. You, It's very small, and you can't zoom in. And I feel like in other games, it, it's easier to tell where you've been. Like There'll be like dots on the map if there's something. or There's just not much. There's some color-coded map rooms. One is an ammo room and save room and whatever else. But I don't know. Oh, there was one other thing I didn't like. There were certain points where if you got knocked back or if you fell, you couldn't get back up and you had to loop back around and get to where you were trying to get to. There are at least three different places where that's happened to me. So just little things that I, I shouldn't be getting frustrated when I'm playing, but there I am getting frustrated. But alas, I don't want to talk too negatively because I, I am enjoying my, myself with it overall. Uh, the achievement list is actually... Wonderful. Michelle, I'm sure you like this because you get achievements just for just about everything you do. It's not just killing bosses to get achievements, but any new thing you find, um, you get an achievement. I'm trying to be vague here. I don't want to spoil. The, there are a lot of fun gadgets, a lot of uh, fun things to find, every weapon you find. Uh, the other interesting thing is you do find multiple weapons, but you can only carry a couple at a time, so you have to pick and choose. Um, I do hope, I haven't come across this yet, but there's some, there's there's grenades, and then there's different kinds of grenades, and hopefully all the grenades can blow up everything. You don't have to like go back and get the right grenade. Um, so far, it's been fine with that stuff. trying to think of what else I wanted to talk about, but I do like the list. I do know that cleanup is going to be a pain because it's hard to figure that stuff out when you're, what you're playing. There's a very good map online. Uh, I'm sure the guys Mm -hmm. mention it, um, but it labels where everything is just for some reason. And I wasn't the only one it happened to. I, I had to go through the map at least two times, maybe three times for whatever reason, you know, sitting at 96 or 99 percent looking for the last thing um which is not my favorite thing to do in any metroidvania but this one mm-hmm. just stood out to me like it it almost half the play time it felt like was map collecting um and, and at that point you know some of those collectibles if i recall don't do a lot of stuff i can't remember if they give you anything if you get no. a certain number but uh my my least favorite type of collectible yeah, there's 50 relics that I don't think do anything in game. You and they're not and you have to shoot stuff to find them. They're all some are obvious, but 
when there's that many, I'm sure there's easily missable. Yeah, I'm at the point in and the Mummy Demastered. It, so I, I just finished my first or my playthrough of it. And just to, again, state clearly, like also the achievement list is, is good in the game. Uh, but like he opened with, there's this achievement to play through the game without dying. So the strategy there is you have three save slots, you save the game, make sure you copy your saves. You're going to spend a couple extra seconds here and there making that copy. So you make sure, you always want to make sure that your uh, your death count is zero. And once you finish the game, that achievement pops right away and then you can go about and explore and not worry about that so much. And and I'm very much in the camp, just like what else said. The game is good. Mommy Demastered is is a good, solid Metroidvania, but I don't think it does enough to really elevate beyond being a, a solid Metroidvania. And it has these, I, I have 47 of 50 relics, and I'm not looking forward just from playing naturally, but there's no sort of tracking, like a lot of Metroidvanias will have some kind of item that'll let you see where things are, or like Elle said already, it'll be marked on the map, like, hey, you missed a collectible in this room. The map is easy though i think like i think i found one room so far in my cleanup that i hadn't found initially but i'm pretty sure once i play through it again i'd be surprised if i didn't get the map completion you just have to make sure to go back and be thorough there are some walls you can break through and and most of them though seem to create shortcuts more than open new rooms new rooms typically are behind either a wooden door that you have to blow open with a grenade or a metallic door you blow open with something that you get a little later on. So they they don't really hide too much in that way, which you can take or leave whether or not that that is a good design mechanic because it doesn't encourage that sort of exploration that you might get from other games of the in the genre. Yeah, I noticed that too. Like, I, my my instinct is to go around hitting walls, like, uh, mm-hmm. like the old days. Even right from Metroid, you went through walls, you shot walls, and that's just a staple of the genre. Sometimes, where you see like a, a breakable wall and you hit it. But I've I've really found none of that stuff. Nate, what was your experience? Do you remember? Uh, no, I don't remember. It's been so long, uh, and I have to go back. So when I go back to play this, I will probably just uh, restart it. It's been that long. Yeah, I'm pretty oh, sure okay. he's. I thought you finished uh, it. No, I, I think he's like even more of a okay. casual than you are. I was looking it up. I was ashamed, okay. Koosh. Way forward, I'm man. Shocked. I mean, I definitely wouldn't uh, tell anyone to not play this game. Mm-hmm. I think I think it's definitely good. I, I have in and a lot I like of ways. That it's Sorry. Straightforward. Yeah, like I have in a lot of ways at this point sort of equated Mummy Demastered and um Record of Lotus War D Lit in Wonder Labyrinth because they are both very like this is a solid, controls well, looks of the era, generally good music, Metroidvania. It's just Mummy Demastered is the more sci fi bent where you're gonna be using guns and bombs. And Deedlit is more magic. But in my opinion, Deedlit, I think, was a little more engaging to me because I tend to like that motif better. But it suffered from who the heck knows what's going on because it's part of this big, greater sort of thing. But I I feel like just as a baseline, like this is a solid, totally okay Metroidvania. They're they're very comparable, at least to me. Corey, you played through both, right? Do you have a similar take um the the deed lit one is less memorable uh probably mm-hmm. because of the opposite i the motif doesn't and where mummy yeah. demastered is definitely more my style but i, I guess i, I can like, see the similarities you like shadow complex a lot and this was more yeah shooting. oh yes yeah, yeah. Shooting. Shadow complex uh, is my top tier there right and i think that that lines up if if shadow complex is what you look at in a metroidvania and and it has that intangible that really puts it above mummy demastered falls more in line with that just because of what it's using as its source material but gameplay wise it's solid you know everything works the controls are really tight you're not gonna have trouble with that other than the knockback stuff so everything works as expected the different guns are are fun to use like to see what works effectively against different enemies and you should 
uh, play with that. There are seven guns in the game. You're allowed to have two equipped in addition to your third basic one that you always have equipped. So messing around with that stuff is is pretty cool. So there's good stuff going on. But I, I'm with Elle in that like it seemed to come so highly recommended and it didn't quite hit that bar. Yeah. I know uh, Neo really liked it and he wrote some of the solutions. So I look forward to discussing this with some people once I'm finished with it. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure Waka had a segment on it also. So I'm going to go back and listen to that also uh, again once uh, once I complete it. But it's as far as Vayner of the Month goes, it's perfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And for next scares me. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to play that. Any game with the Konami code, good times. All right. Any other mummy stuffs? Mummy stuffs. Mummy Demaster. That was Mummy Demaster, the winner of the month. Thank you uh, to Neo for continuing to make that a thing. It is uh, the favorite genre of uh, H101, of course. All right. It's time for sales. Seems like sort of a quiet week for sales, but uh, I'm sure we can find some stuff. Corey, you're you're up first, bud. Yeah, I don't have a strong offering. Uh, Darksiders Fury Collection War and Death is ten bucks. That's seventy five percent off. That's two whole games. Um, it, it caught my eye because I have started the War Mastered Edition, which is one of the uh, the games that you get with it, you also get Darksiders 2 Death Innovative Edition. Um, I, I do remember liking the, the little bit I played of it. Um, I, I've heard people say it's buggy, maybe. Uh, but but otherwise, I mean, two two games that are rated decently uh, for 10 bucks sounds pretty good. So uh, I might be picking up some Darksiders this week. Oh, I like Darksiders 1. That was fun. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask you, are they co-op? Do you know? No. Not Rats. to my knowledge. Although I did have one session where Michelle read me the uh, the guide. That was co-op. I mean, that's factual. <laughs> but, yeah, they're, they're single-player <laughs> campaigns. They're, they're a fun uh, someone watching you play on the couch type of game. Yeah. The first one was like an adult Zelda. Uh, exactly <clears throat> which was really fun i i really enjoyed that one the second one's a little bit of a um, kind of an rpg ish a little more really? rpg ish but still an action action ah game. okay okay still interested so yeah. and dark siders furries has a bunch of aminals i'm not sure about three i haven't <laughs> while i own it i have not started it <clears throat> i haven't finished the second one yet so. oh okay all right nate yeah, I, I, yeah, I have to echo that this was not a fantastic week for sales, but I always have to come with something. Uh, Discovery Tour Viking Age. Uh, so this is Assassin's Creed Valhalla-ish. Um, it, it's by Ubisoft, and uh, I think it just doesn't just doesn't have all that combat. And you're still doing quests, but you, this is kind of the educational side of things. It's twelve dollars down from twenty, so I'd like it to go a little. A little, little lower before I dive in. Uh, this is in the education and trivia, and it's three to four hours. I still, I st- I'm still very interested. I'm tempted, but I would love this to be like eight dollars or five dollars. Uh, so I might put a pin in it and just wait. Um, next up, Jetto Miro, Hero of the Universe. This is five dollars and nineteen cents, down from thirteen. It's listed as an action game, three to four hours. If you like wonky physics and drunk robots, uh, this might be a game for you. Um, because the controls are kind of, um, they make you, apparently from some reviews I've read, the controls make it feel like your, your robot is drunk as you're moving. He's just very uh, clumsy the way he's walking, knocking over buildings and such on these little spherical planets, kind of like, um, you know, uh, Mario Sunshine or not Sunshine, a uh, Galaxy or, um, gosh, the rare game that I can't remember right Galaxy now. Galaxy 2. <clears throat> Yeah, Galaxy <laughs> 2 for, for for that one. Uh, but no, there was a rare replay game like uh, 
Destruction Core or something like that. Um, that was Blast pretty Core, cool. yeah, yeah, Blast Core. <laughs> thank, you, thank you, but also, of course, more famously, Ratchet and Clank. Blaster, uh, you, yeah. you were able to do that as well. Um, so that looks interesting. Uh, once again, five nineteen down from thirteen. Okay, and last up, Protocol six dollars and twenty five cents down from twenty one. This is an adventure title. This is going to be important a little bit later in the show. Um, it's twenty seven to forty five hours, depending on you know which of the three people that have completed the game you're talking about. Um, there are solutions for every achievement, and there's a walkthrough in Russian on Steam, and apparently. Um, some of the solutions on TA reference that and say, hey, just run it through a translator. Uh, it's a little bit wonky, but uh, it looks like a decent game. There are uh, some YouTube walkthroughs as well. If, you, if you're the type that likes the YouTube, I like to read my walkthroughs. Um, but that is a game that's worth looking at. All right. Uh, I am going to recommend a game I talked about Uh Two episodes ago on 233, which is She Sees Red, which is the full motion video game, easy completion, $3 down from 10 and it is Play Anywhere. So that's a good one. And there's a bunch of uh, Zitalon Windows games on sale for 35% off, so 3 bucks for stuff like 50 Years and the Synchro Hedgehogs games, which I actually enjoy. And Butterfly. Stuff like that. Like three bucks for 5,000 gamer score. <laughs> and 20 minutes of your time. Yeah. No. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. All right. That was sales. Uh, our current games with gold is Autonauts. I imagine we'll be getting. February news soon. Actually, Iris Fall is still around till the 31st, so get that one. That one is a one to two hour. Auto Knots is a 60 to 100 hour management game that no one's going to play. But redeemed anyway, because, you know, that's what we do. Uh, Nate, you want to uh, read the Game Pass news? Sure. Uh, in Game Pass news, there <laughs> is none. Uh, once again, oh. once again, there's no Game Pass news. Um, you know, once again, uh, thanks to the magic of time travel, uh, we're going to have mm -hmm. a little bit of a Microsoft event tomorrow, our time, but yesterday, your time, and uh, dear listener, and they will probably not discuss anything new. They'll be talking about games that we already know about, but they'll be going into more detail. And the hope is that that the end of that will be a one more thing with some Game Pass news, but. Uh, I've been fooled for a whole month now or two months uh, that we're going to get Game Pass news. I think it's never coming. Uh, the world is horrible. And uh, that's all I have to say about that. Wow. Oh, I guess I should talk about what's <laughs> leaving. At the end of the month, we're losing Donut County, a fantastic puzzle game. It's one to two hours. Yeah. There's a walkthrough. You should play it. Rocker will echo that, I'm sure. I'm sure mm -hmm. he's. Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, Worms WMD. It's a stack. So it's Xbox and PC in Game Pass. It's strategy. It's turn-based. It's 40, 50 hours. Nobody's doing that if they haven't already. Next up, Telling Lies. It's a visual novel. I feel like we've talked about this. I feel like I've talked about this. It's one to two hours. There's a walkthrough. <laughs> Go do it. Is it uh, worth doing? Sure. Do you want to find those visual? <laughs> if you're into those visual novels, the walkthrough will get you through there definitely in an hour to two. Uh, it's not going to, you know. It's a, it's an easy thing. If you decide to do it, you're gonna get it done. There's no there's no challenge to that. Okay. Lastly, Taiko no Tatsujin, the drum master. I'm sure I nailed that. It's a music game. It's 60 to 80 hours. There's a walkthrough. Uh, if you haven't started that, you're not gonna get it done by the end of the month because of some of the achievements. Um, they are gonna require you to play so many days in a row. And yeah, you use I think you can use clock manipulation. I'm not sure, but you're gonna have a hard time getting that done in the next few days. Um, you are gonna have to play a lot of the drum master in order to get it done. Uh, it was a fun game while it was up there, but uh, it's time is over. Did and you then... finish that one, Koosh? I did. I did. Okay, I finished nice. it. So that, that's why I'm, I'm so happy with the Game Pass leavings. Uh, I got three out of the four that I would want to do, and they were all done ahead of time. Um, so I'm happy with that. Hey, same. Which why, yeah, which is why I was able to move on to Infernax, and I'm already eyeing uh, next month and the month after uh, for things to work on. Um, until they actually tell us what to work yes. on. Yes. 
until well, they're not even going to tell us. We're going to look at the app. And <laughs> and someone's going to post it until some clever sleuthers are going to uh, scour the internet and and find it for us. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you'll probably hear see it in our Discord before it's mentioned on uh, Xbox Newswire. Um, lastly, um, go ahead. I was going to say, um, looks like Corey. What are you waiting for? You have one achievement left. No, no, I'm done. Oh, are you? We'll not talk about when he finished it. Uh, By by the time they hear this, I'll be done. Oh, there you go. Oh, Um, yeah. So I was going to say real quick that this game, I guess all four of us completed this then, right? That's that's pretty good. All four of us played a 60 hour game. Can you believe it? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we totally played a 60-hour game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't even want to tell you about my hour earlier. counter. No uh, outside help. I, I, I don't want to tell oh, you. I was thinking about like this earlier, <laughs> and uh, you're going to just rip me a new one, right, El? I played this music game for wait. 80 hours plus, and uh, I don't think I've heard more than 10 know. songs <laughs> in my ear holes. That's fine. Play, I, I'm not going to get I, mad at you for it's, that. It's, it's the strangest thing. You just play it on silent during meetings, and it's great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too mad at you, except that some of the songs were were catchy. Uh, uh, my hour counts for me. My hour counts at 326 hours. Jeez. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, that's you mm, worked okay. the nephew uh, on that one. Hopefully, you I were, certainly you were did. Playing too. Michelle did the smarter way. If you want to tell them uh, <laughs> what that was, uh, I just used Tiny Task on PC. It was much easier than yeah. using a nephew that I don't have. So that worked out brilliantly. <laughs> but I played the game a lot legitimately before doing that. Like I had legitimately like played through and gotten all the crowns and you know gotten some gold crowns on most of the songs on easy and played so I I enjoyed actually just playing the game probably for a good almost 60 hours before finally saying all right look I'm just not it saw it saw frame holes list this closure is coming I don't want to be the one person who put time into really playing it and be the one person who didn't complete it. So, yeah, eventually just gave in to grind the coins. Yeah, we're going to make fun of that person. You, you would like this, L. There is one difficulty achievement. Uh, you have to perfect a song. I was going to ask. And don't tell this me past, you cheated it. No, I don't know how you would cheat it. How, how would you cheat it? You'd find a way. Now I'm mad at myself. I, I, <laughs> I took one of the easy songs in the guides on easy. It's like 56 uh-huh. notes. Uh-huh. I, I memorized where it would be a, a, a correct timing to press the button. Mm-hmm. And I got so close to my TV and mm-hmm. I can't tell you how many times I got like 54 out of 56 notes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And oh man, I wanted to throw my controller so bad, mm-hmm. but I did it. And about yes. a dozen times later, I got it. Great relief. Yes, I actually sent Michelle a picture of me missing one note <laughs> yes. and, uh, on the, the Spirit of the Way song, Always With Me. So I switched to Homura. Yes, that's mm-hmm. what I did. And then I yeah, got, me too. I and then I did it on that one. Yeah, I'd like to say I had no problems with that achievement. You you would like to I say would, that? I would like to say that. Um, <laughs> yeah. I spent I spent a lot of time doing that. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to do the grind, and then I I'll save that one for when it leaves Game Pass. And then uh, I went back and did it. I I did it in like ten runs after that. But there, I spent a lot of times with the 45 out of 46 or whatever, and I was just getting so mad. Uh, so yeah, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a little bit every day, and then I'll be done. And that kind of worked out for me. So. Did you all wind up changing any imagined. of the options for the song? Because like I had it played on like max speed and and also like just because i was getting annoyed at how slow the song was i don't think it was max so if (laughs) you haven't played taiko no tatsujin you can change the speed that the notes come at you at it doesn't change the speed of the song um but yeah i I definitely jacked that up to like 2.5 or something like that instead of just one because it was like i spent too much time watching it approach where you needed to be and over was overthinking it every time. I did at first, but then it didn't work for me. So I just added on normal speed when I finally did it. So yeah, I think that was like 1. Is, 5. yeah, Sangria mentioned like doing it like 1.5 or two or somebody did. And I used that. I did that actually yeah. for a lot of the songs. Cause it was just, there was so much waiting. Mm-hmm. I, I think what did it for me is one. I think there's an achievement for playing on inverse mode, which just changes your button presses. And I actually, 
played that way the entire time I've been playing this game. Huh. And <laughs> what that means is the 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 only key I was really pressing in that song was my trigger because it's a lot quieter than the button. Um, and you know, playing near and work, you got to be quiet. Um, and so I <laughs> yes. think the you know the time to press the trigger or pressing a button is enough to where it was making me miss the perfect note. So changing it to normal mode, I was able to knock it out in like two tries. Yeah, I just assume that there's a way to cheat it because you can use tiny task that someone would have figured out a way to time the mouse clicks. I the think song. if oh, they could, did, they probably you wouldn't could. Sh- they probably didn't share it. You could, but nobody did because I looked. And uh, <laughs> it's getting towards you know, the end. I was getting really frustrated. I was just like, ah, I wonder if there's a way to do it. And I looked at some things. I was like, no, forget it. No, 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 joke. Just do it. no joke. I almost posted in the Cronus channel. Like, did anybody find anything until <laughs> I saw that you completed this cell, that achievement like two days prior. I'm like, I got to uh, do it. I just got to do it. <laughs> No way. So thank you for You're motivating inspiring. Yes. You're inspiring. <laughs> I, I did the same thing. I, I got a chair and got a bright close to the TV. <laughs> Eventually just did it. And Michelle had no problem. Not really, no. <laughs> no, of course not. Yeah, I knew it. But really, one <laughs> skill-based achievement, if you want to call it skill, in yeah. uh, eating out of 89. <laughs> I mean, at, at this point, right, is, there's also the the 30 days achievement and playing the bonus songs and all that. Like you, I guess you could with like time clock manipulation, but it's not completable without dealing with all that in the next little bit. Anyway, even if you had the yeah. 60 to 80 hours to spend on it. So that dream is done. I was looking at my highest TA games and this was number two on games that only had 1,000 gamer score. Because uh, we're 5,500 TA, and it was my number two, number, my number one, I think, was Puyo Puyo Champions. But it was just interesting to see that. It's definitely inflated like crazy. Fascinating, I know. Thanks for indulging me. It's got a lot of starters, oh. more than I would have guessed. <laughs> mm-hmm. Same. I'm always surprised at how many people actually started people, it. Well, people like liked their music games, and it was a free, a free one to try. So yeah. Since we're talking about things leaving stuff. Game Pass, Take you remember that's what we're talking about, right? <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, yes. Uh, since we're talking about that, the one last thing I want to mention is that uh, Marvel Avengers, which is on Game Pass. Um, Posted an update saying that following update 2.8 on March 31st, 2023, will no longer add new content or features to Marvel's Avengers. And all official support for the game will end on September 30th, 2023. The game will be delisted then. Uh, so if if you want to start that, or if you did start that, you might want to chip away at that because that is a grind uh, and get it done. And sure enough, uh, they'll probably break something <laughs> with the issues they had with the achievements from the beginning. Uh, and it's Square Enix, and Square Enix is is a bad word in my book these past three years. Um, so, yeah, I, I added this story here because we don't actually have confirmation it's leaving Game Pass at any certain point. But if they aren't selling the game, I can't imagine it being in Game Pass. Still, just to echo Kush, the game is, has been buggy during active development and support. So I would not wait because they said that the game will be available to still play but I wouldn't chance it. Okay. A reminder that in February, we will definitely totally for sure be playing Bioshock. Yes, we will. Anybody who picked up the, the remastered yes, trilogy for will. $10 and we, and we gave away uh, some codes for Bioshock. Yes, you uh, did. Yes, we did. <laughs> Patrons got some extra love from us, so thank you to our patrons. And, uh, you know, anybody who wants to record with us and, and tell us your thoughts or, you know, we'll have some stuff lined up, hopefully, or spoiler casts and stuff like that. Sounds like a good time. Thanks uh, for next week's show. Um, I am intending, because next week's show will release on February 2nd. So right at the beginning of the month, I'm going to put together a sort of cheat sheet for the achievements. So things to keep in mind, stuff to look out for, 
So if you're diving in, you kind of know things you can do to minimize playthroughs or minimize time spent. So I will I will put that together and have that ready for next week's show. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. There was a request for that and I forgot who did that, but uh, it was a good request. Thank you. All right. Um, we're going to be highlighting another one of our yearly contests. Uh, Nate, you want to tell us which that one is? I would love to tell you what that is. Uh, this time around, we are highlighting Adventure Time. Um, so similar to Year of the Vayner, but this is focused on the adventure genre with a particular leaning towards point and click. And generally, you'll be getting points for achievements won in these adventure games throughout the year. Uh, just keep in mind that these are the genre adventure. Action adventure does not count because it's not adventure. So any point and clicks are worth double in this contest. Um, these points are tallied and they will be used to determine prizes at the end of the year. Once again, all these contests that we're talking about these past couple weeks and a few future weeks uh, are annual contests. That's why we're taking our time uh, in week, week by week. Um, you'll, earn, you'll also earn points by doing uh, Adventure of the Month, which is a randomly picked or semi-randomly picked game from the genre. Uh, and there'll also be a point and click of the month. Uh, but it'll be for point and clicks only. And story completions and full completions earned in the month both get points. Uh, if you've previously done them, you get half of the points. And yes, it might be two point and click games that ended up being picked. Uh, with that in mind, the January picks uh, in the adventure game of the month, it's Edgar Bachbach in Bullzack. Uh, I'm sure I nailed that. And the point and click of the month is almost my floor. Both stacks count. And there's an extra bonus in January, and that's a full completion in Old Man's Journey, Airy, A Journey Beyond Time, and all three Journey Down games get bonus points. <laughs> Obviously, there's a... Uh, sorry, I, of course, uh, pronounced the month incorrectly. It's January, which is the journey. <laughs> journey-uary uh, is the uh, clever pun there. No journey to the Savage Planet? Come on. Old man's journey. Once again, I, All I right. should probably also mention before, sorry, uh, that if you cool. want to get into this contest, go to the contest channel. I think it's the contest info channel, actually, and react to uh, the adventure time. It wouldn't hurt to tag Chewy um, to make sure that you're being tracked. Uh, if you are intending to do this throughout the year, definitely do that if you're only just jumping in maybe you want to hold off i'm not quite sure but i believe that he's only going to track from the time you join forward uh so if you decide to join this in february january i don't know if he's going to go back and do it maybe he'll say something in channel about that uh but that's how you get involved if it sounds interesting all righty that is very interesting in Brag Camp, we start off with Michelle. And as always, we start off with completions. So let's highlight those for this week. Chopin has reached 400 completed games. Mike Pitch is at 900 completed games. Waka Pale has reached 1,150 completed games. And Lucas1987 has reached 2,850 completed games. Nice. In Streaks... Sir Polygon is on a 50-day streak. RPG Davy with 100 days. What the Fug and Quantum Grey 17 have 150. Domain is at 300. Survivalist is at 550 days, and he is joined by Neo 21. Princet is currently at 1,100 days. Celebrating their annual anniversaries, Lucas 1987 with one year, and Princet with three years. Talking about gamer score, we have Alex RD at 400,000 gamer score, Chesno at 700,000 gamer score, Ace at 1 million gamer score. Congrats, Yay. Ace, on that big milestone. And Alicia at 1.4 million gamer score. Oh, cute little Ace. You know what game Ace played to get his million? Actually, I do. I do. So I'm, I'm not going to answer. I think I do, too. I think it was Avatar. <laughs> was it Avatar? Nice. I think it was Avatar. It was Avatar. I did that for my 500K. So I was being clever. Don't don't tell a GT3 option fan who 
wants to remake it and make you play through it. <laughs> and if uh and if we made fun of Ace for getting a one point uh one million gamer score and only having a one point three ratio, then uh it totally wasn't me. I, I wouldn't do that. I respect your your million gamer score. Now go play something decent, will you? In leaderboards, Alex R. Davis is now third in the Gamer Score leaderboard for Vayner's. Alicia in the top 20 of England TA leaderboard for Puzzle. Casual Exile is number one in the Oceana TA leaderboard for Platformer. Ice Fire TN is in the top 100 of the TA Difference leaderboard for Puzzle. Mental Knight 5 is in the top 20 of TA Difference leaderboard for Adventure. NBA Kirkland is now in the top 10 of the USA TA Difference leaderboard for Connect Required. Scatavase, Scatavase, can we do the Fandango? Is now in the top 1,000 of the Achievements 1 leaderboard for Simulation. Vulgar Latin is second, and then Nebraska, Nebraska Classic. TA Difference leaderboard, what the fuck? Top 2,000 of the TA leaderboard for Vayners. Talk to us about Vayners Fug. We'd like to hear all about that. And the Magical Monkey X is in third in the completed games leaderboard for Party. Nicely done. Maybe you played Party Animals. Because, as we know, you like the, the pinata. And this has been a fantastic show. Corey, it was so great to hear your dulcet tones. Likewise, El. Likewise. Thankfully, we didn't have to pull your leg too much to join us. Oh, that wasn't Ruffin's my leg. Oh, <laughs> oh man, that, that's yeah, not that how old the bay joke <laughs> I'm saying goes. <laughs> I had I had old bay for dinner. <laughs> not not just this season. Just, just, old, just old bay. Just a big old pile of old bay. <laughs> Did you have two percent milk or one percent milk with that? <laughs> no, no milk. <laughs> I'm done. He, I'm done. <laughs> he made lines of them. I think. <laughs> Oh, old bay. <laughs> I don't know how we can top that. Uh, thanks to Corey and Michelle and Nate for joining me, Biggle, on Achievement Hunting 101. Join us on all our socials. And please do. <laughs> all right. Class dismissed. Have a great day. Bye. So long. Hello again, AH101. This is Neo21, and I am here to talk about year two of the Vayner. But before we head into that, I just wanted to cover one quick thing with the wrap up of Year of the Vayner. Finally got a chance this last weekend to figure out uh, my formula. Well, I wasn't actually figuring out the formula, I just had to count them by hand to make sure I had it right because the formula is going to be too complicated. Uh, but to get the entries for the raffle figured out, so I got that all sorted out. And we did the raffle this weekend, and the $20 raffle prize went to a woo. So, congrats to him. So, for year two of the Vayner, uh, a lot of it's mostly the same, but the major changes are pretty exciting. Uh, but we'll get to that in a moment. So, uh, for the things that are pr pretty much all the same is uh, in order to qualify, games have to have the, the Metroidvania genre tag on TA. If the game loses the genre tag, it will be removed from your stats. I don't think we're going to run into that this year, but we did have, I think, five games lose it last year, which caused quite a hassle for me, but I'm hoping that doesn't happen this year. Um, and for every uh, Vayner completed, you earn one entry into the end of the year raffle. And just like last year, we every month we have a Vayner of the month. For January, it is Mummy Demastered. And if you complete Mummy Demastered in the month of January, you will get three entries into the end of the year raffle. If you have previously completed it, that is going to be one of the slight changes, is that in uh, last year it was worth two bonus points. Uh, this year I'm just going to make uh, previous completions worth one bonus point. Or bonus raffle entry, I should say. Uh, similarly to last year, uh, if a the Vayner Month has a stack, you can do either stack as long as they are basically the same. Uh, the only game I think right now that qualifies as n not really being a stack is Shadow Complex because uh, they're drastically different achievement lists. 
If a Vayner is in Game Pass and is about to leave Game Pass, then it will automatically be added on as an additional Vayner of the Month. Uh, so I have a tab on the spreadsheet that has tracked all the games that have been Vayners in Game Pass and left, and all the ones that are currently in there, how long they've been, and how, you know, so you can take a look at that to see how likely it is to leave Game Pass. I think the one that's highest on the chopping block right now is probably Infernax, because we were coming up on a year, or possibly Monster Sanctuary, and that one has two stacks, so um, I'm planning on getting to those very soon. Also, just like last year, unobtainables do not count, so if you get all the achievements in a game, uh, it ought, not any game, but obviously a Vayner, if it has unobtainables and you get all the obtainable achievements, then let me know and I will count that as a completion for you, but you will have to contact me to let me know because I won't see a game completed uh, item show up on the feed. All DLC is required except for two situations. One where the DLC has uh, unobtainables, which uh, I think Indivisible is the only one in that camp right now, or one stack has DLC and the other one does not. Uh, that uh, is also Indivisible and also currently La Mulana 2. So if you want to play uh, either of those, then you only have to do the base game on either stack, and that will count as a completion. Um, on to the fun changes. The biggest changes is more prizes. So for wh whoever earns the most TA every month, I'm going to give a $5 Xbox Store credit uh, to. And then I'm also going to be doing some random giveaways throughout the year. I already have a few to give away at the end of January. I'll get to that in just a moment. And to be eligible for certain things, I'm going to try and uh, entice everyone to stay more active. So to be eligible uh, for things like these random drawings, the $5 uh, award at the end of the month, voting on the Vayner of the month. What I want to do is, uh, in order to be eligible for those things, you need to have gotten a Vayner achievement, at least one, just one is the requirement, um, in the last two months. So if you get one every other month, then you'll be good. Um, but if you don't, then you will lose out on stat tracking, so then you won't be able to win like the $5 anymore or the grand prize at the end of the year. Um, but if you do lose stat tracking, uh, then you can regain it for something like voting on Vayner of the Month. However, if you do lose stat tracking, you still get uh, entries for everything that you complete uh, for the raffle at the end of the year. And then one last change you're making um, we didn't run into this really last year, but uh, just uh, in case we want to um, make a Vayner of the Month more than once in a year, uh, it's going to have a cooldown, so it can't be picked again uh, within four months. So um, the exciting thing, as I mentioned, $5 to the TA winner each month, as long as you retain stat tracking, a end-of-year raffle for all your uh, completions and vein of the month completions it's going to be $25 and then whoever earns the most TA and retains stat tracking through the whole year obviously is going to win $60 Xbox store credit so if you want to be eligible for some of those prizes then you do need to have stat tracking for the whole year which means that you have to sign up in January if you don't sign up in January you can still be eligible for the raffle at the end of the year for any completions that you get but for some of the other month to month prizes then you'll need to be in from the beginning so if you haven't joined yet then go to the Vayner channel in discord and go to the pinned post and it's the most recent one and react to that with the Ori emoji to join in before the end of January because at that point uh, then you will no longer be eligible for some of the prizes. So uh, looking forward to playing more Vantage with you guys this year. And you guys have a good one, and I will catch you in Discord.